Do decrees or affirmations make our problems disappear? Great question. Keep watching to find out. question that was presented to us, that was asked of us, about decrees and affirmations. Do they just make all your problems disappear? So as soon as you say it, everything goes away. Hmm. No, that's not how it works. And that's what we're going to be discussing. How do affirmation decree and decrees really work and help us? Honey? Yes. Would you please share with us the differences between a decree and an affirmation? Before I do that, my lovely, wonderful wife, yes. and all you lovely, wonderful beings out there, uh, you said that decrees and affirmations don't take away our, Don't make your problems disappear. Don't, don't make your problems disappear. But in, case, in some cases, they do. So I want okay. to... I wanted to kind of add that to that. Not only that, they do make them go away. It's just a matter of how long it takes for them to go away. Right. And I think my understanding of the question was like, it's an instantaneous thing where right now it's just gone, like magic. Well, in some cases, we've seen that happen, where immediately they go away. So that's why I want to point okay. that out. Right? Yes, I'm glad you did because I don't recall those. Ah. So I'm sure you'll bring them up or examples. So that we can just talk about myself. It's happened to me many times. Uh -huh. So why, why do you look so bright? <laughs> I, didn't always, I don't recall. I didn't know. always know you, you know. I know, that's <laughs> just, why. Just that's to why let I'm you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've met in a long time. You know, and we were friends for a long time, but... I actually lived before I met you. <laughs> I know, that's why I'm like, oh, let me hear these stories. And I also was <laughs> implementing your teachings before I even knew you existed. I so know, so go ahead, share I'll with tell me. You, this one for mine, just think that we've been together since we were born or I something. I should know everything <laughs> about him. <laughs> so anyway, go back. let's go back to your question, all right? Now okay. That I've mentioned that part. Okay. The difference between decrees and affirmations. Well, you know the difference. Let, let's, hear your, let's hear your perspective first and see if there's anything I should modify. Okay. I probably won't need to, but go ahead. A decree is a command that you make, commanding the energy and the universe around you. Well, not make. They don't make those. Those are huh? handed by the Ascended Master. We don't make those at all. I did, did I say we make them? Right. You said it's a, a, it's a one that we make. Okay, make. it's something. It's a it's a command that you say. Is that oh, better? Oh, is that what you meant? That's what I meant. Okay, okay, Sorry. okay. Yes. Uh, this is the difference between British English and American English here, just for all of you to understand. Yes, that's what I no, meant. No, that's the difference between how you talk. And <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing to do with America, it, England. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the point is, it's a command that is said. Commands are always said. A, a decree is something you say. <laughs> you should start over. Remember what a decree is, right? So let's go to affirmations. <laughs> <laughs> Don't avoid the topic. Let's see, you should start by saying, I know what you're trying to say now. I finally got it. Okay. What, you, what you're trying to say is that a decree is something you say. It has to be verbalized. And that's what a command is, right? Yes. Well, I said, for example, that a command has to be said. Now someone can say, oh no, you can write a command down, but not really, because when someone reads that, it becomes what? A direction, right? Or, uh, how do they say that? When like an order? Order, right. It's, it's an order. When you command, when you command, it has to be said. And that's what a decree is. A decree is a command, which means as they've said, it's the science of the spoken word. And that's the key. Spoken word. Okay. It's not something you think. 
You literally, your lips have to move. You don't have to say it very loudly. You can whisper it, but it has to be said. I think that's what you're trying to say, right? Yes. Thank you for summarizing what a decree is for us. Yeah, that's, that's like my brother, Daniel, <laughs> who, who I turned to, right? So it's a Daniel, will you explain this? And then he'll give that really great explanation. So, uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, um, okay. Uh, uh, to me, that was very clear. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the other part today is that it's handed down to us by the Senate Master. It's not something that's written by a human being. Every decree comes from an ascended master. It's, if you ever hear one, you might think because it sounds just like an affirmation in, in many in many cases, mm -hmm. but it's not. It, it comes directly from an ascended master. Why do I stress that it comes from an ascended master? Do you recall? Not off the top of my head. Because with a decree, when some when an, an ascended master is involved with something. Their frequency, their energy is always yes. attached to it. Do you yes. want to elaborate on that? Well, what, that's, yeah, that's, that's enough. That's enough. I mean, oh, okay. If their energy and vibration are attached to that decree, then every time you say it, you're pulling in that frequency to yourself. Right. You're attracting the frequency. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. And it, it's pretty much like having the presence of that ascended master there. And, and you know, because they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. You are calling on them, saying, I can't Michael, you know, Lord Shiva, you know, um, beloved Mohammed, mm -hmm. or beloved Mother Mary, or whomever it might be. You're requesting their presence when you say that decree. And of course, then they show up. They don't go, I don't have time, I'm busy. You know, they show up. So that's what a decree is, right? Right. Okay. And when you decree, it's also for the benefit of every person in the universe. That's something that maybe some individuals, have, we've talked about this in other videos. Right. But when you decree, you're decreeing on behalf of everyone in the universe, especially individuals that have no concept of God or a higher being or a divine source. They don't know anything about um, the spiritual realm, and maybe they're not even interested in it. That doesn't mean that they don't require help from the spiritual realm. So when we decree, we're providing that energy that can be used on, on their behalf as well. So when someone says, pray for me, they don't realize that that's pretty much what they're saying. So we don't pray for anybody, we decree because we know that that provides the energy they need mm -hmm. for what it is they need to overcome, whatever is going on in their lifetime at that time. So I hope that helps a little bit. I think so. Okay. Thank you for the wonderful explanation. You are very welcome. Now, affirmations. Mm -hmm. Now you go ahead with that one. <laughs> <laughs> affirmations are made by us. They're positive statements to help attract things that we want in our lives. And when you say made by... Made by, like, I could just make a statement of something that I want. I, you know, I thank God for the perfect job at the perfect pay. Mm -hmm. That's not handed down from an ascended master. That's something that I came up with. That's correct. And it's something that I'm, as we say, co-creating to bring to myself. That's correct. Okay. Very good. Now, is it possible that you could say an affirmation? You come up with an affirmation, but it's really guided by, say, a higher self, your guardian angel, an ascended that's, master. That's highly possible, right? but how will you know? Well, if you don't check with 190 Vision. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very certain there are the sources out there you could check with, but we only know about 190 Vision. We only know so. about ourselves here, so. <laughs> right, but that's the thing, that because it's coming from you, our safe assumption is that it's from you, right? Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't something that was handed down. Right. How do we know it's handed down? Because we have it written that it's handed down, okay? Got it. And that's how we know. You can look in the Bible. For example, Jesus had the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. you know, well, he handed down the Lord's Prayer. But if you read the Lord's Prayer, it's literally one big decree, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, why would I say that? Because he said in, in there what? My favorite line. On earth as it is in heaven. Exactly. <laughs> the moment you say, on earth as it is in heaven, what are you saying? I'm manifesting what's in heaven 
where Jesus has said that in heaven there are many mansions. Mm -hmm. And so what he's saying is pretty much just manifest your mansion on earth. Right? Mm -hmm. Because it's already in heaven. People don't think about that as a decree, but it is. Okay. And there are many more. Anyway, so. So now, to mm -hmm. your examples of decrees like making your situation or problems disappear. Oh, okay. Like for example, magic. I remember this one, and this one stands out for me the most. Whenever I think about things, what my life has been like, I always go back to this one. Uh, and I know I've mentioned this to you in the past where I came here as a foreign student, right? Mm -hmm. To America as a foreign student. I had a soccer scholarship to play at U of I. And then, of course, after one quarter, <laughs> my coach was, or maybe it was one, yeah, he was quarter system back then. So after one quarter, he was fired because they said that what he, what he was doing with the program was illegal, which meant then that I lost my soccer scholarship. Everybody that got soccer scholarships lost them because, of course, they didn't want to be kicked out from by the NCAA and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So hey, I'm in America. And after that very short time, oh, and then, of course, I had money because of all the money I made playing soccer, you know, where I was. But then I had given that to the family I was staying with. Do you remember that story? Mm -hmm. And I and they promised that they would give it back to me. You know, paying me some money. I never got it back, so I pretty much didn't have any money. And I remember meeting this. I saw this sign for an apartment. You know, on the west side of Chicago, which I didn't know was what they call a bad neighborhood at the time, right? Right. <laughs> but I I saw the sign, so I called the person, and it was an alum of U of I, and she told me, oh, you're going to U of I, I'll work something out with you, you know, but that was, it. I, I skipped the point, because I was like, oh God, how, you know, what do I do now, I don't have a place to stay, I don't have any money, I can't afford anything at this point, what do I do, mm -hmm. and within about 10 minutes, I was headed to the cafeteria, I didn't have any money to eat. I just felt like I'm going to go to the cafeteria anyway. And then I saw the sign, right? Mm -hmm. And I had about two dollars, so I used it was payphone. Back yes. Then. So I called from the payphone, and she answered, and she said, "Come to my place." I said, "Well, I don't know how to get there," and I told her because I didn't have money to get there and then be able to go home at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, "I'll meet you on campus." And she literally came and met me on campus at the cafeteria. Wow. She drove, right, she drove. She literally was from Switzerland, actually. Um, so we talked and I told her what was going on, you know, what happened to me. And she said, I'll work with you. Don't worry about it. So you can move in this weekend. And that was Thursday. That was that Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and I had slept in, at school that night, the, the Wednesday night. And I was going to sleep there again the Thursday night because I don't have anywhere to go. And she told me, move in. You can move in today. You can move in this weekend. I said, well, she asked me, where are you going to stay tonight? I said, uh, that's cool. So I told her where I've been staying. She said, move in today. She said, let's go get your things. I said, I really don't have anything. <laughs> but uh, she drove me there because I had more classes, but she drove me there and she said, how are you get back? I said, well, I have two tokens. They had tokens for trains at the time. Uh -huh. And she went and got me a pack of tokens. Wow. Which 10, which would last me a week because one to go to school and one to return is the way I did it. Uh -huh. um, so just by making that statement, just by, you know, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, any help you give me, I'll appreciate. So that's an affirmation, believe it or not. Right. Just by saying that. I was going to say, so how, so how does that tie in? But thank you for... No, that's the affirmation like part. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, within 10 minutes, I saw that little... You know how people put those signs with papers and they tear off a paper? Right. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. And I just took it off and called her. And all of a sudden, I had a place to stay. Hmm. You know? And, and that's just one of them. Now, I didn't look at it as an affirmation at the time. I looked at it as, as a prayer. It's, of course, Catholic, right? Right. And I said, call out to God. But I always knew I shouldn't just say... Uh, oh God, you know, please help me and this and that, you know. So that's not how I say you know, any help you can give me, I appreciate. So that's an example. Okay. Wonderful. 
So it, it, it pretty much instantaneously, instantaneously changed my life, is what I'm saying. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's a question though, going back to the question. So do they let your problem disappear? Uh, of course they do. The only question is how long will it take? Well, it, it depends on you and what you do. They're, they're, they're not magical. You still have to do your part. We always talk about co-creation. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the example that I gave, um, after I made that statement to the universe or to God, right? Mm -hmm. In my case, it was to God because that's what I was thinking. I just followed how I was feeling. I knew I didn't have any money to buy any food from the cafeteria, but I headed towards the cafeteria because I felt that's what I should be doing. I didn't say, oh, I don't have any money, why should I go there? I just followed that hunch and went with it. And on my way there, I saw the sign. See that? Mm -hmm. And then I got the paper and then made the phone call. Then what happened? She came and met me there. Right. At the cafeteria. The next part is, I wasn't ashamed to let her know. Initially, I was kind of ashamed, right? But once she asked me the questions, I just let her know exactly what's going on. You know, I let her know, here, this is what's been going on. I've been sleeping here. You know, I wait till I to leave, and then I go into a lab, and that's where I was sleeping, in the chemistry lab. You know, that was always my last class, or biology lab. Those were the two I was doing at the time, biochemistry and um, organic chemistry. So I would sleep in one of those labs, you know, under the table. And so I let her know. And she said, okay, we'll do something about that. So what's the point? That's co-creation. Mm -hmm. You can't be ashamed, you know. The, the only reason why you're ashamed is because you're allowing your ego to take over. But if you know that God is taking care of you, then you let it out because you know God is taking care of you. You know, there, there, there are no personal feelings or being concerned about being judged. You just have to let whomever it is that's there to help you, let them know because that's the way they can help you properly. That's okay. co-creation. And that was with an affirmation. That was just an affirmation. All right? Now, now you... that was before I was even introduced to the teaching. So I just come here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, go ahead. No, I was going to say, as you're saying that, um, I, I know growing up, being a Catholic, I was taught to pray. Mm -hmm. And when I had lost a substantial amount of money to me at that time in my life as being a 12-year-old child, I immediately, you know, talked to St. Anthony and St. Jude, and within a few minutes, I found my money. So, I guess that would be a similar kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. So that's an affirmation. Or even, uh-huh. Go ahead. And is there even recently, like a couple of years ago, when we went to the store and there was this lady convulsing on the floor. And as we walked past, I just called Shiva, Shiva, Shiva. And all of a sudden the lady stopped moving and she right. got back up. But that's not an affirmation. That, no, that was a decree. That's a decree, right? <laughs> <laughs> so as you're talking, I'm getting the ideas in my head. Not the ideas, but the, the remembrances of the memories of situations. And that's an excellent one to bring up because while the lady was there on the floor, Mm -hmm. You know, convulsing and all these people are panicking. I was just watching, and you'd think I'd be the one to be doing something. Yes, I did. Right? I was like, well, didn't did you do something? Nope. And you're the that's exactly what my husband told me. I'm like, well, all I did was say Shiva, 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 and my husband said, well, then <laughs> you did. <laughs> exactly. I was like, really? Yeah, me? But that's, but that's how it works. See, everything goes with intent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the key: intent. Whatever it is you're going to say, whether it's an affirmation. Or a decree. If you don't mean it, then uh, your mighty presence doesn't believe you either. Your higher self doesn't believe you. Your subconscious doesn't believe you because you're just saying it. You know, well, I guess I'm supposed to say this. I have the perfect job for the perfect pay. That's an affirmation, by the way, right? Right. Um, so if you just say that, well, nothing's going to happen because there is no intent behind it. However, that's why when you hear stories where people say, oh, I have been changed, right? Mm -hmm. Or God saved me. What kind of situation were they normally in when they describe it? A traumatic situation. Exactly, right? <laughs> where they, they had a lot of emotion in there, so their intent was very strong exactly. for whatever the situation was. Yeah, I mean, they're desperate. Right. See, that's intent. And sometimes desperation creates the intent that you require. 
somebody stuck under under a car. Well, yeah. And there have been said, many stories like, like that. Bingo. So, where people just all of a sudden lift the car and they're like, whoa, superhuman strength. And then people say, oh, it's, a, it's adrenaline. Oh, yeah, I learned about that in, in biology. Yes, but I'm telling you, more than likely there was an angel there helping with that. Right. So here's the thing. Why did it work that one time? Then people go on and say, well, you know, but it never worked again after that because you didn't have the same level of intent or desire. That's all it is, and that's what co-creation is. Mm -hmm. People say, well, I've tried so hard. Uh, that's the problem. You've been trying. Why don't you just do it? Mm -hmm. Trying doesn't give you intent. Trying leaves that window open for failure, for you to step back. It leaves that doubt there. That's correct. That it might not happen. That's correct. It doesn't have what people say. You know, they go like this, well, you know, I'll try this for one week. Well, what do you think is going to happen? It's not going to work. You're going to quit because you, you already to, said. Right. You give it a, a time frame, one week. Mm -hmm. Okay? So decrees come directly from the Ascended Masters, from the spiritual realm. They're very powerful. But even though they come from the Ascended Realm, you still have to do your part. You know? They're not magical. So don't expect to say a decree and all of a sudden your world changes. Unless if your intent is really powerful. Mm -hmm. So the key is, raise your level of intent, raise your level of desire, say it like you mean it, and that's when you'll see the results that we're talking about. Otherwise, it's going to take some time. But even when you say it with intent, it could still take some time, mm -hmm. because it depends on how much karma you have to balance, right? Right. But the thing is, you start saying an affirmation or a decree, then it's time to let go of that situation. Stop trying to handle it on your own, because the moment you say an affirmation, the angels do step in. They're there to help you as well. So let them handle it. Stop trying to do it yourself. Yes, hand it over. Recognize what you're going through. Say your decree affirmation and then let go knowing that they're there to help. Okay? If you have anything you'd like to add, please do so in the comments. If you have questions or concerns, be sure to send those to us as well. Remember to subscribe and like this video. Join the Facebook group 190 Vision to connect with others on the same journey. Get help by visiting our website 190vision.com. Support the 190 Vision mission by clicking on the Donate button, which is at the bottom of each page of our website.